Welcome, welcome. This morning we are going to go through the 2017 paper one for additional mathematics. With that being said, let us begin. All right. Now this question says, the function f of x is 2x cubed minus x squared plus 2hx minus 6. And f of x is 2x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x minus 3. What is the value of h? There's an easy way to do it where we can say that product by 2, so h over 2 is equal to, well, let's not do it that way. What we can do is just expand this. So I'm going to write that this is now 2x plus 1 multiplied by x plus 2 times x minus 3, that is x squared minus x minus 6. That's what you get when you expand x plus 2 times x minus 3. Then we just need to expand this one more time. And so we'll work this out. What we're going to get is 2x cubed. We're going to get 2x cubed. Then 2x times that is minus 2x squared. Then we're going to get this times this is minus 6, minus 6 times 2, so it's minus 12x. Then we have plus x squared. Then we have minus x. Then we have minus 6. That is what we get. So since this is what we're getting, all right, all you need to do now is to look at your, this, this is your x terms. Where are x terms? We have minus 12x and we have minus x. To simplify minus 12x and minus x, that's minus 13x. Since it is minus 13x, and this is hx, and h is minus 30. Easy, soft, nice. Another way you could do it, this is another way, it's always good to look at both method, or another way you could do it is say that h over two, c over a is equal to, c over a is equal to, that is minus a half, minus a half times, minus a half times negative two plus, then you go minus a half times three plus, minus two times three. This is another way to do it. And then you transpose for H. This is another way. And when you transpose for H, what you'd get is you work all of that out and you multiply it by two. Minus a half times minus two is one plus minus a half times three is minus 1.5. And then this is minus six. Then you multiply it by two, you still get minus 13 for H. So the two ways you could do it. Question two. Question two says express as a single fraction. To express this as a single fraction, we find the LCM. And the LCM, of course, is going to be X squared minus nine. And then you're going to say x plus 3 into x squared minus 9. That is just x minus 3. And then x squared minus 9 into x squared minus 9 goes 1 times. So this is plus 3. But then minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So it's x over x squared minus 9. Easy question. Question 3. If x squared minus 6x plus 13 is equal to a times x plus h squared plus k, then 
first thing, you know, in order to find H, H is equal to B over 2A. This is the formula to find H. So all you need to do is substitute. B is minus 6. So H is equal to minus 6 over 2 times A, where A is 1. A is 1 right here, because that's 1x squared. And so minus 6 over 2 times 1 is negative 3. So we're looking for H as negative 3. There's only one option there, so that's option B. All right, nice. This question, determine the nature of the roots. You use discriminant, which is B squared, which is negative 6 squared. Negative 6 squared minus 4 times A times C. So it's minus 4 times 3 times negative 5. And when you work out the discriminant, what you're going to get is this is equal to 36 minus 4 times 3 times minus 5. I believe that is 40. The discriminant works out to be 76. 76 is greater than 0. The discriminant is real and distinct. Easy question. Next one, question 5. It says a quadratic equation is such that the sum of the roots is minus 2 over 3 and the product is 3 over 4. What is a quadratic equation? Well, the quadratic is going to be x squared minus the sum of the roots. So it's going to be x squared plus 2 over 3 times x minus the product, which is minus plus the product, which is plus 3 over 4 equals zero. And so in order to get the answer, all you're gonna to have to do is multiply through by 12. When you multiply this through by 12, you would get 12x squared. Two over three times 12 is eight. So you get plus eight x. And then three over four times 12 is nine. This you get plus nine. This is what you get, which is option A. Nice. Next question. The set of values of x for which this is greater than or equal to zero. First thing to do is to convert it into a quadratic inequality by writing it as 5x minus 2 times 2 minus 3x, and this is greater than or equal to 0. So it's best to write it this way. Best to write it this way. And then if this is greater than 0, if you were to sketch a graph to show what's going on, then the roots would be, if you were to sketch a graph to show what's going on, look at this. This times this is negative, so that it's a frown curve. This is frowning. The roots would be one, it's look like, roots would be two over three. This look like two over three right here. And this look like two over five. So if these are the roots, what is going to happen? You want where it's greater than or equal to zero, that's in here. That's inside here. So the solution is X is between two over five and two over three. X is between two over five and two over three. Easy. This question now, 3x plus 2 is greater than x minus 2. And so what you're getting is subtract x from both, or subtract 2 from both sides. So you get 3x is greater than x minus 4. And you subtract x from both sides. And so you get 2x is greater than minus 4. And so x is greater than negative 2. Option D. 
moving along. It says if f of x is equal to minus 2 over 9x cubed, where x is between minus 3 and 3, then what is the range? So first thing, plug in 3 in this and say what I get. Minus 2 over 9 times minus 3 cube. You work that out and also work out minus 2 over 9 times 3 cube. Work these out and see what we get. So we have minus 2 over 9 times minus 3 cube. That's minus 2 over 9 multiplied by minus 3. And that is cubed. I get 6. And this one is giving me minus 6. So it's between minus 6 and 6. This is it. When you work this out, you're going to get 6. When you work this out, you're getting minus 6. So it's between negative 6 and 6. Easy. Moving right along. All right. The next question says, f and g are defined by f of x is this and g of x is this. Find f g of x. To find f g of x, all you need to do is plug g of x into f. So we're going to plug g of x into f where x is. So where x is, you replace it with g of x. And so it's going to become 2x plus 1 plus 1 divided by, plug g of x right here, it's going to be 2x, 2x plus 1 minus 1. So what you're going to get is, this works out to be 2x plus 2. And you're, of course, dividing it by 2x plus 1 minus 1. So you're just dividing it by 2x. So 2x plus 2 divided by 2x. You can divide through by 2. Divide the numerator and the denominator by 2. So you're going to get x plus 1 over x. That's what we get, x plus 1 over x. Option A, easy question. This says now if m of x is 5 plus 2x, what is m of 4 minus 2a? So then that's just going to be m of, that's just going to be equal to, to plug 4 minus 2a where x is, so it is 5 plus 2 times 4 minus 2a. And so what we're going to get is 5 plus 8 minus 8a. So what we get is this is 13 minus 8a. That's what we get, 13 minus 8a. M of 4 minus 2a, why is 13 minus 8a not there? We look, we plug this, 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times minus 2a is minus 8a. Yes, this is 13 minus, this is 13 minus 8a. That has to be m of a, m of 4 minus 2a. And so this question, as you can clearly see, something is off. It wants m of 4 minus 2a, and this should have been 13 minus 8a. All right, let's check it one last time. Replace x with 4 minus 2a. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times minus 2a is minus 8a. Yep. And so it's going to be 5 plus 8 is 13. Then you have minus 8a. That's 13 minus 8a. So this one is off. And we leave it at that. That one is off. All right, next question. It says, if inverse of x is x squared, then what is f of x? If they give you f inverse, to find f of x, 
all you need to do is interchange f inverse and x. So you're going to then write x. So we write x is equal to y squared minus 1. And then you make back y the subject. So you add 1 to both sides. So you get x plus 1. And that's equal to y squared. And so you square root both sides. And to say x, the square root of x plus 1 is y. And so that is the function. f of x is the square root of x plus 1. Easy. Nice. Moving right along. Let's look at this one. It says we need to simplify what is. So it says we need to simplify what is this right here. Two, and two to the minus one over eight to the one third. So let us go ahead and do that. So it's going to be two to the minus one is a half. So we're saying what is a half? Eight to the one third is two. So it's a half divided by two, which is a quarter. Easy question, so. All right, now this one is a repeat. We all know this by now is three to the three M plus one over M. This is a repeat. And this is a repeat of which year? Two, 2015, I believe. Repeat of 2015. We've done this so many times. Nice and easy. It says now, the value of two to the z, where z is five plus log to base two of three. <coughs> so to find what is two to the z, first let's simplify what z is, right? Simplifying what z is, you can rewrite five, right? You can rewrite five as, Five can be written as five log base two of two. You can rewrite five as this, plus this is log base two of three. Then we're gonna write this as one rather than logarithm, as you can bring this up now and rewrite it as log base two of, now bring it up two to the fifth, two to the fifth times three is two to the fifth, times three is 96. This is log base two of 96. And that is what we get. And so now, this is what Z is. Z is log base two of 96. And now two to the Z, I mean we want to find what is two to the log base two of 96. Now what I'm gonna do is change this to base 10 and rewrite it as the log of 96 over the log of two. You put that in a calculator, log 96 over the log of two, and you get 6.6. .6. So you get 6.6. .6. So to then find what is two to the Z, two to the Z is two to the 6.6, .6 and you put two to the 6.6 .6 in a calculator, you get 96. 96. Easy question. Nice. The next one says, given that log to base two of x cubed is six, then the value of x is, all you need to do is carry down the power well, we don't need to carry down the power. Let's just use the rule of logarithm. So this is saying x cubed is equal to two to the six. And so that means that x is the cube root of two to the six. And so x is equal to the cube root of two to the six. Two to the six is of course 64. And the cube root of 64 is 
4. That is that. Nice and easy, soft. Moving right along. All right, now this is a repeat question. We know this is two. We don't waste time on repeat questions. This is a repeat from 2015. All right, now this says, what is the common ratio of this geometric sequence? The common ratio is 12 over 18. 12 over 8, that's the common ratio, or 18 over 12. That will simplify out to be 12 over 8 is 3 over 2. That is 12 over 8, 3 over 2. That is it. Option C. Nice. Okay. Okay. It says the sum of the first n terms of a series is given by the sum from one to n of five minus three r. What is the sum of the first 10 terms? So to find the sum of the first 10 terms, well, this can be broken up as, this can be broken up as the sum from one to 10, because we put in n as 10, the sum from one to 10 of five, minus three times the sum from one to 10 of r. Now the sum from one to 10 of five is 10 times five, which is 50, that is 50, minus three times the sum from one to 10 of r, the sum from one to n, Sum from one to 10 of r is n over two. So it's gonna be 10. It's n times n plus one over two. So it's gonna be 10 times 10 plus one, which is 11 over two. Now we work this out and we're gonna get three times 10 times 11 divided by two. 50 minus that is minus 115. Nice and easy, soft. Easy question. Next part says, the expression, the sum from one to five of this is, all you need to do is plug in. Plug in when R is one first. When you plug in R as one, you're going to get minus one raised to the one times three raised to the one plus one, that is minus nine, plus you need to plug in now when r is two, so you have minus one square times three raised to the two plus one, you get 27. You plug in when r is three, you get minus one cube times three raised to the three plus one, which is four, you get minus 81. Then you plug in R as four, we catch the pattern. It's gonna then be plus 243. Then when R is five, we get minus one raised to the fifth times three raised to the five plus one six, which is minus 729. You add those up. And so what you're going to get is minus nine plus 27 minus 81 plus 243 minus 729 is minus 549. That's it. Easy question. All right, moving right along. This one, question 20, big repeat. This is a repeat of every year. Every year this come. We know this is 600. Nice and easy, soft.
All right, now it says a line L passes through the point 65 and is perpendicular to a line whose equation is 3x plus 4y minus 7. The equation of L is given by, so L passes through this and it's perpendicular to this line. So one thing you need to note about this line, not like in the front here, go to times, go to 20. So right here, we notice that this can really be written as 4y is equal to minus 3x plus 7. And so in this case, you can say that the gradient is equal to negative 3 over 4. If the gradient of this line is negative 3 over 4, then the gradient of the line L, and so L has gradient of 4 over 3 since they're perpendicular. So since L of gradient four over three, uh, that means the equation of the line passing through L is going to be Y minus five is equal to four over three times X minus six. That is it. So all you need to do now to simplify this is multiply two by three. And so what we're gonna get is y minus five is equal to, multiply three by three first to get three y minus 15 is equal to four x minus 24. And so to bring everything to one side, that will simply just lead to Bringing everything to one side, that would lead to, bring over this, it would be, we want x to be positive, so we bring it to one side, it will be 4x minus 3y. Bring over minus 15, so we add 15 to minus 24, we get minus nine equals zero. That's what we get. 4x minus 3y minus nine. Option D, nice. Just gotta move it over there so it doesn't interfere. All right, now this says the line 7x minus 4y plus 25 equal zero and 3x minus y equals zero intersect at P. What is the coordinates of P? So what you can do is, since this of four and this of minus one, you can multiply the second one by four, multiply the second equation by four to get 12x minus 4y, Multiply minus five times four to get minus 20 is equal to zero. And so this up here we have is seven X minus four Y plus 25 is equal to zero. Then what are you gonna do? You're gonna add the two equations. So you're gonna, you're gonna subtract, I mean, you're gonna subtract these two equations. When you subtract them, what you're going to get is 12x minus 7x is 5x. And then you're gonna get minus 20 minus 25, that's minus 45. And so 5x minus 45 equals zero. And so that means x must equal nine. X equal nine. If you get x equal nine, you don't even need to continue. Because look why, if x is equal to nine, there's only one option with nine. Easy, soft. This question now, it says a circle has center three minus two and a radius of four. 
the equation of the circle is, let's see this now. So the circle has center three minus two and radius of four. Usually what you do is write it in standard form first, but there's actually a shortcut method to this, where what you do is you multiply minus three times negative two X, so you're gonna get minus six X. You multiply minus two times minus two Y and you get four Y. So what am I saying? I am saying that if I multiply this by two, I get 6x, so it's minus 6x, which is option C. You might say, how oh, you know that? It's the shortcut method. The shortcut method is to multiply this by negative 2x, multiply this by negative 2y to get your x and y term. That's the shortcut method, so it's this. Easy. So let me write it down, you just multiply by negative two, multiply this by negative two. We're gonna get negative six X, negative, negative, negative two become positive, so it's four Y, easy, All right? And if you don't like to do it that way, then of course the alternate method would, to, would be to write down X minus three all square plus Y plus two all square equal four square. That's the alternate method. So depends, it's up to you. Two vectors are equal if we know that two vectors are equal if they have, they're going in the same direction and have equal magnitude. B. All right, so this is a big repeat question. You know this. This is a repeat from 2013. Nice. This one is, is this a repeat? I'm not sure, but we know that AB is vector OB minus OA. It's so vector OB, which is four five minus vector OA. So it's four five minus minus 17, 25, yep. And so what you're gonna get is four minus minus 17 is positive 21. And then five minus 25 is negative 20, option B. Nice and easy, So, All right, this one, we know it's minus one over root three. This is a big repeat question. This is a, Repeat of 2015. This one, what is the size of the angle missing? Measure this one, big repeat, you know it's pi by five, a repeat of 2014. All right, we know X was 36 degrees and 36 over 180 is pi by five. So big, big repeat question. Moving along, four pi by five converted to degrees is 144. That's another big repeat question. This is a repeat from 2013. Find the smallest possible angle. This one is a repeat. Again, from 2014 this time, which is five by three. So many repeat question. Repeat from 2014, all right? So the more you do past papers, the more you notice which one is repeating. This one, another repeat question which is one over root two, sine alpha cos alpha. Repeat from 2012. 
this one tan theta is opposite of five over minus 12. Big repeat is repeat like every year. Okay, it's repeat pretty much every year. Every year question. All right, this again, another repeat. This is 35. This is a big repeat. And this one I think is 2014 or 2015. One of those two years. It's a big repeat question. Easy. This is two over sine x, big repeat. It comes like every year. This is like every year question. So once you do the first set of papers, everything is just repeating. This, I know it is repeat, but I can't remember the answer. So let's work it out again. D by dx of this is you carry down the power of a half. Then you subtract one from the power. So you get seven X squared plus four. Raised to the minus half. And then you multiply it. You're going to multiply it by the derivative of 7x squared, which is 14x. And what you're going to get is 14x over 2 is 7x. So it's going to work out to be equal to 7x divided by the square root of 7x squared plus 4. Nice and easy, soft. Easy. Question 36. Question 36 says, at a point seven four on the curve, dy by dx is zero. This is a big repeat question. Maximum turning point. This is a repeat from 2016. So much repeat. All right, question 37. We are asked to find the gradient of the curve y equal cos x. So when you differentiate cos x, you're going to get dy over dx. And that's equal to when you differentiate cos, you're gonna get minus sine x. And then you're gonna plug in x as pi by six. Plug in x as pi by six. What you're gonna get is minus the sine of pi by six, which is negative a half. Easy question, soft. Question 38, what is dy by dx? When you differentiate two x squared, you get four x. When you differentiate three cos x, you get minus three sine x. That is what we get. Nice and easy, soft. So it's 4x minus 3 sin x. Easy. Option C. Next question. He says, a curve has stationary point at minus 2, 5. If f double prime is x to the 4 minus 15, then the point at minus 2, 5 is I think this repeat, but can't remember the answer. So we'll work it out. So f double prime of negative two is equal to negative eight, positive eight minus 15, which is negative seven. And that is less than zero. Since that is less than zero, it is a maximum turning point. Easy. The integral from one to f four of f of x is six. Then what is the integral of four times f of x? So this is just going to be four times the integral from one to four of f plus five. 
and the integral of four, ta four times one to four of f, this is six, four times six is 24. So this works out to be four times six, which is 24 plus five. 24 plus five is 29, which is option C, soft. Question 41. Question 41 asks, what is the integral of cos x? When you integrate cos x, you're gonna get sine x, and when you integrate minus sine, you get positive cos. So it's gonna be two cos x plus sine x. Option D, nice. Now, question 42. Before we do the question, always remember that volume is equal to pi times the integral of y squared dx. This is the formula for volume, pi times the integral of y squared dx. So they give you y. So first thing you need is y squared. When you find y squared, y squared is equal to 4x to the 4. Yep, 4x to the 4 is y squared. And so volume is going to be equal to the integral of this look like zero to one of four x to the four. And we multiply it by pi of course. So it's pi times the integral from zero to one of four x to the four, which is option D. All right, so that just went away. We already worked it out, it was option B. Now this one, ask what is the integral of y? When you integrate 3x squared, you add one to the power, and then you divide it by the power of three, plus when you integrate cos, you get sine x. Integrate cos, you get sine x. And so what happens? This three cancels this three, so we have x cubed plus sine x. Option B. Easy. Now this question now, it asks what is the integral from one to two of one plus x plus x squared? Now the integral of one is x plus the integral of x is x squared over two plus the integral of x squared. We add one to the power, we get x cubed over three. We're gonna integrate from one to two. One to two. So we plug in two. So plugging in two in your calculators, of course, don't do it in your brain. You may make a mistake. We all do sometime. So plugging in two, we get two plus two squared divided by two plus two plus eight over three minus plugging in one, it's one plus a half plus one over three. And you get four and five over six. All of this works out to be four and five over six. Finally, the last question is, find the area enclosed between zero and one of this curve. So the area R is equal to the integral from zero to one of minus x squared plus two. And so this is what we're finding, the integral of minus x squared is going to be minus x cubed. You divide it by three plus, when you integrate two, you get two x. And we're integrating, of course, from zero to one. So since we're integrating from zero to one, all you need to do is plug in the one. Plugging in one, you're gonna get minus one over three plus two. Minus one over three plus two, is five over three. That takes care of this question, soft. This concludes this paper. 
nice and easy. So with that being said, I hope we had a lot of fun, as much fun as I did. And stay tuned for the rest, 2018, 2019, and 2020. Oh, 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 oh,